visible. It's completely faded, the colors on it. So it's just pretty much a white vinyl. <laughs> no. Yeah, used to be blue with a black outline. Um, not anymore. So heat gun seems to work pretty good on this. Um, and then you can come back and clean up the sticky residue if there's any with just uh, regular rubbing alcohol. So kind of the trick is not to get it too hot to where it stretches and tears easy or bubbles your paint. It doesn't take a whole lot. Goes pretty quick here. Whoop, there I just did it. But what I've been doing is just like this. And I need to heat up an area again. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't take much, does it? No, not really. Little plastic spatula just to get it started. Yeah, I already got the ADF and G on one side removed. Um, I still need to cut the vinyl for this. But we copied the curve onto just some um, oh, parchment paper, I guess. That worked pretty good. And basically, because this is a curve, in two dimensions, if you just cut this vinyl straight, it'll end up, I think it'll end up like a smiley face, actually. Yeah. Which is pretty weird looking. So um, <laughs> you actually have to kind of plan this out in advance. So if you get yourself just some butcher paper or parchment paper, you can put it up here and then you can um, figure out how, what kind of curve you want, whether you want a straight or a little bit of a curve like we did here and lay that out on your paper and then uh, and then you can come back and um, lay, it, lay it flat on a table and figure out the difference between your curve, your length, and your curve and then you can lay it out on your um, on whatever cutting program that you're using Basically what you do is you just make an oval with with that depth of a curve and that length and then you can um, just do like curve to path with your text or your numbering or whatever you have to be using at the time and you'll end up with the with the right curve for what you want. So that's what we had to do on the bow. And uh, like I say, we already did it on this one. Just like that. Nice. Might make me nervous. Pop off that cord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. So I just have this on like the medium setting. You don't need a lot of heat. You'll bubble your paint don't want that so the house itself we used epoxy on so it's different from the polyester we have to pick up some different materials for it yeah get around so, to it here soon kind of actually i wouldn't use epoxy again let's put it that way so there's a lot of prep work in between coats and layers and I mean it is really good stuff though because this was only like two thin layers of cloth especially like up here is a low traffic area it never gets hit by anything so like two layers of cloth in a work area wouldn't stand up very long no no it wouldn't and that's like really light cloth too more than anything the structural integrity is the plywood that's under this and this is more of a waterproofing Yeah, all looking good. Yeah, we'll get this all cleaned up. Like I say, 
I don't, probably won't do anything with this surface. The front here isn't bad. The side could use some 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 paint, maybe just some touch up is all it's really gonna see. Just because we don't have time to do anything with it right now. It used to be a lot more shiny, huh? <laughs> uh yeah it did. Um, Nice. Yeah, goes pretty quick, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, Dad's working up there. I'm just doing some hydraulic work. Just doing some hydraulic work over here. Uh, extra hose that's just looped behind the mast for many years now. I just took that off. The captain's here. Uh, that I went to right there. Um, uh, run this uh, what you see is blue chafe gear run that hose behind there and through and just along there to hook up to these ports here and that is for the reel control which is now this valve over here the reel control uh, we put our little uh, pulley up here it's homemade by the way um, next up we need to clear out that stuff to uh, tie a line and have a pulley over there so when we're hauling the line will come up through this block through that block and into the level wind where it will be spooled onto the reel and this morning I drilled some holes through there those are all uh, old holes. I didn't miss like 500 times. It was just uh, old holes in the wood. Just bored out this one here and put a half inch bolt through into the frame here. It's actually connected to this chunk of stainless uh, steel here. It's a bracket. We showed you that yesterday. Carriage bolt through to the hold side with the backing plate and also down here has the same thing. So Good and solid. It's not going anywhere. So we also need to uh, cut a new piece of wood that goes on the inside of this reel here. This uh, frame. Um, we stored this at the at our processor, and uh, somebody made off of a piece of plywood that was pretty rough looking in the first place. Somebody's desperate, but. Yeah, cut a new chunk of wood for that, and we can put all our uh, pr extra peripherals on there and kind of clean up the deck. Kind of a dump right now. And aside from that, I'm gonna pull off our jiggers, get them hoisted off, and basically just do our usual halibut routine. So, I guess we'll bring you guys back in a bit. Just gonna. Get these hydraulics hooked up. Ah, I wish we had time to clean up this top house and get it redone, but there's other work that needs to be done just besides kind of repainting it. So it doesn't make any sense to do that without doing the rest. There's some cracks in the, the fiberglass epoxy coating that need to kind of be dealt with anyways. So we'll just get these on here for now. We need to put new ones on again, then we will. It's not very expensive to make them now that we have the equipment to do it. So, yeah, we're gonna go grab those. I think I got it cleaned up pretty good here. Yeah, looks like it. You can still see the old ones just a little bit, but not much. Just a shiny outline, probably can't see it on camera, but. Yeah. Yep. Cool. The right in the middle of the nine, is that on the, under the... That's the vinyl, yeah. So we'll have to work a couple little bubbles out. Maybe once it's off the transfer paper. 
can work them out. Yeah. I wish can I would have got some of that stuff. Can you, uh, like, just warm it up a little bit with a heat gun? Maybe. Would that pop them out? Maybe. I think what it does is it loosens the adhesive, so maybe a little bit right there and then just push yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that looks good, guys. So, uh, next step is we just peel this off uh, carefully. So you just kind of want to be careful, like, on sharp corners and stuff that you don't lift it up with the transfer paper, but it's, uh, this vinyl is pretty darn sticky, so should be okay under most circumstances, but just kind of fold this over and just keep it like that as best. Well. It'll be fine. Yeah. The one on the stern came out better, I don't know why. That looks good. Right on that nine. Right at the, the bottom of the zero part. It looks pretty good. Still figuring it out. I think that other stuff's probably the key. I'll order some. Yep. Looks good, guys. So, what you doing? Repositioning this table off the back of the reel here. That will make it a lot more comfortable. The drum is like... It's smaller, huh? Is it smaller? It's not this big, is it? No. No. But it'd have to be... It's like right... Yeah, it's right outside of that. Basically, the black, I think. Okay, we'll go off that one. Or the lump. The lump. The flange? Yeah, the flange. Let's go off that then. So it's about like that then. Uh huh. Okay. So if it's up a little bit more, that'd be good. Mm hmm. It'd probably be more comfortable to you. Yeah, it's a hair low right now. Yeah. Well, let's get, just get a couple of reference marks here. Okay. So what we're doing is figuring out where this line is going to be when it comes off the reel. Um, we got to make sure that it's not dragging on the bottom of the table right here when we're setting out. And so the, the tube that connects the two sides of this drum is about the size of this flange right here where the bolts go through. So I just got a piece of line coming off of it, going to it. Looks like we got clearance right there. <clears throat> Maybe. So we're actually going to just lift this up a little bit more anyways to make it comfortable, but we just wanted to verify that that would be okay and it looks like it will be. Cutting those off or what were you? Yeah, because they're angled. <clears throat> going to have to make them go straight and then we'll bring them over this way to the scupper again. But right now they're angled and they're hitting the frame. So they cut this aluminum stub off right there and, and re-weld it so it comes down straight. And then we can bring our hose over and into that scupper and all the... the gurry will go. All the gurry goes overboard instead of all of your feet in the deck. Uh, that sounds good. So we'll just start there, huh? Yep. And get a position and then we'll deal with this leg too. Maybe just take that leg off too for right now. Okay. I think it's easier.
decent height for me, but it might be tall for everyone else. Well, we just have to find a compromise. Yep. Yeah, I guess yeah. the beating is kind of short term. Accommodate that. You gotta make it comfortable for yourselves. Maybe just down like a inch from there. It feels like it's higher than it used to be over there. It is. Right now, I think. Okay. Um, probably. Yeah, it's higher than it was. It's also, it's gonna be a little bit high to chop bait on if the thing's right here. Yeah, that's true. But also, uh, I think you're right, maybe just go down a inch or two, a couple inches and see what it looks like. That's like a good le level to pick clean and scrape right there. Yeah. Because you don't have to bend over so much to get in there and dig around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably the best part to optimize, right? Just because, like. And baiting, it doesn't matter too much if we just have the tub on the deck or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just flop it in there, anyways, like we do. Yeah. So that's, that's not too bad. I don't think of it. So it wasn't up. Where was it before? Oh, so that bolt went through. So it was almost like this was just a little bit higher than the rail. Is that right? Just a hair. Just yeah. a hair. So that is that one that went through. So. Oh, that one there. Yeah. So what's that uh, put it at in relation to that? Like just up a little bit more would be nice, huh? Forty-one. Thirty-eight and a half or thirty-nine. So that's just up a little bit right now. Yeah. Hmm. It seems about right. Yeah. Seems but is about it right. is it a little bit low for you still? No, I think that's perfectly fine. I think this will probably be where you want to get from, huh? Yeah. Get that nice spot again. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Even for me, it'll be nice for pinning hooks. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're more or less. Uh, finished up halibut prep just a few last bits and bobs to tidy up Get our bait and tubs organized over here Your buoys tied to the rail all that stuff uh, We'll probably go on a little dry run to test out this new setup. Maybe we'll see But seems like it should work out pretty good so. Anyway, I guess uh, stay tuned um, We'll bring you guys back once we're baiting up some tubs. If you like the video, please give a like, comment down below if you enjoyed, and be sure to subscribe for more. See you guys later.